It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Pause. I'm Mitch and welcome to the Pigjama Party, another TLP collaboration. Uh, so I'm super happy to be part of this presentation, presenting my galaxy themed artwork. And special thanks to Nathan Linzel for putting this on. He's the fine art of distraction. He's the organizer of this massive event. Um, and I hope you really enjoyed Cyfrost's event as much as I did. Um, and we're ready to get straight into this piece because I don't have a lot of time, but this definitely took me a long time to complete. So sit back, relax and watch as I talk you through how I created my galaxy theme piece enjoy all right so it's voiceover mitch here and to start with i'm pouring onto a piece of acrylic that came out of the a2 frame that i bought from kmart yes there is something there you can just see it's shining in the light there um, i'm not just pouring straight onto a puppy pad um, so what i'm using is my british paints exterior low sheen black pillow and what i did to start with is i just swiped some black cell activator straight over the pillow so the colors I used here are TLP Galaxy, Nebula, Comet, Glisten, and Twinkle. And those are the interference colors. And I also have two chameleon pigments in there that I had in my stash, which I added for just a little bit of extra color. I'm always about using up all of the products that I have on hand. And you can see that I'm just applying the pigment to my swipe tool and then going in to swipe these out uh, with my little Fluid Art Co uh, spatula. And what I've done is I've just done two little swipes. I put the uh, cell activator down first with my colors on top, and then I swipe that out onto the surface. And you can see that the piece of acrylic went flying because it was very slippery on top of that mat. And I've sped up all of this so you don't have to sit through all of the spinning. My apologies if it's making you dizzy because it definitely makes me dizzy. Um, but what we want to do is get that layer nice and thin. And I wanted to do that on the acrylic because my original idea was to layer all of the acrylic together. However, that didn't end up happening. So we've gone with layers of resin instead. The reason that I didn't layer the acrylic is because each subsequent layer I was putting on top was getting foggier and foggier and you couldn't see anything underneath. So here you can see the dry result. And what I decided to do is I'm going to glue this to the baseboard of the frame. And this is just the one that came with the frame. So it has the hangers on the back already, which is excellent. Um, and I've just used some Gorilla Glue to adhere that down. And I've just done a sort of zigzag wiggly pattern that you see standard for when people are gluing things to wood. And that's pretty much held that nice and fast on the back there. The next thing I'm doing is I'm taking my this little picky pigments. I've got Twinkle, I've got Comet, and I have Glisten. And I'm dry brushing those onto the background. So here I think I just used Twinkle and Comet. Um, and then in the layers above it, I used Glisten as well for a bit of a blue-green shift. Um, so what I'm doing is applying it uh, just with a dry brush. There's nothing on that brush. And uh, burnishing it into the background with a Kabuki brush. Now I'm going in with some Posca pens. I've got some uh, white Posca pen and a Molotow chrome pen and dabbing on some stars. Now here I tried to add some glow-in-the-dark pigment, but that ended up just brushing straight off. Uh, so I decided to add that to the resin uh, when I do these resin layers. Now I forgot to tape this up um, when I started because I didn't intend to pour on the background. So I'm just applying my tape there, making sure it's nice and level as well. And we're going to start pouring the resin. So I did take my mask off for this little bit because I wasn't using the resin yet. Just making sure everything's level and then I put the mask back on uh, when I'm mixing everything up. So I just used my drill attachment using my stone coat countertop resin for this R works really really well and you can see instantly how it brought out all of that amazing color in the this little piggy interference colors the twinkle and the comet just using my heat gun to go over it now lesson i learned is because i was working with acrylic is don't heat it up because the acrylic tends to warp so i ended up with a little lump in the middle there so what i've just done is added a little bit of um, my normal fine glitter to my resin and just added it into that nebula area there and you can see me trying to push down the hot area of acrylic didn't really matter too much now that the next layer of resin is dry i'm going in with glisten and twinkle again and a little bit more comet so i'm making the shape smaller and smaller as i come further up in the pace piece with my subsequent layers and here you can see that shining in the light there and changing those gorgeous colors um, and in the nebula as well, you can see those color shifting uh, interference pigments up the top there as well. Pretty sure in that galaxy I used um, TLP Galaxy, 
um, I think I used Meteorite as well, I'm not too sure, um, but it does have quite a bit of color in there. So now I'm taking my white uh, Posca pen and I'm drawing in some more stars and as I came further up in the piece I made the stars a little bit bigger because naturally when you see objects that are closer towards you they are bigger. So I added a few bigger stars, a few smaller ones and I did that with both the white and the Molotow chrome pen. Now there's a little stripe you can see up in the top left there that's where the nib of the texture actually fell out and landed sideways on the piece but I'm going to cover that up and I thought of an ingenious way to do that which you'll see in a minute. Now what I did is I had Officeworks here in Australia print a design that I found on Etsy that I paid for and uh, of a little spaceman and I had them print that onto a transparency sheet. Now what I have here is some glow in the dark powder that I've mixed in with some Josonia gloss varnish and I'm just painting that onto the back of my transparency. And that's the side that the print is on. So I've applied the varnish to the print side of the overhead transparency and what that's going to do is seal everything down in the resin and make sure I've got a nice glossy finish on the top um, on the opposite side of that transparency sheet. I've applied my second layer of resin now and while it is still wet I've got some glitter and some glow-in-the-dark pigment which I've added to the resin and I'm just using my finger to blend everything in and I don't want any harsh lines in this um, so using my finger seemed to be the best way to get that working and then using the torch very very lightly on each subsequent layer so I don't warp that plastic and you can see everything is taking shape look at all that depth in that uh, nebula happening there and I do three or four more layers of resin to build even more depth in, in that. So it's really, really sparkly. However, I didn't add any more glitter. I didn't want that to take over the entire piece and there is not glitter all over the background like I would normally do. Um, I did want to keep it relatively um, concentrated to those areas of the galaxy and the nebula. Um, so I'm just adjusting the plates underneath because I noticed that the board is starting to warp. The heat from the resin and the, um, the heat gun and the torch was starting to bend the plastic and warp the backboard. Also resin seeped into the backboard, uh, making it a little bit wet, which has contributed to that as well. So what I've done here is I've just made that little trail into a comet and I mixed up some this little piggy glisten with uh, Josonia gloss varnish and just painted that straight on. Doing that is called making a glaze, which can be really effective for um, uh, washing over big pieces. Now what I'm doing is taking my Posca pen and in the white and I'm marking out where I want my cave. So I wanted this to look like the spaceman is inside a dark cave looking out at the galaxy. And I've got mixed up some uh, TLP Zeus and some TLP Ore. Quick interruption everybody, my favourite colour is Zeus. While it's not a galaxy themed colour, it is my favourite colour. So please use the code word Zeus at the end of this collaboration for your chance to win the prize pack of 10 Little Piggy Pigments. Back to my video. Okay, so now that I have those mixed up, I've got my Fluid Art Co mat on the side here and I've got some Matisse Mars Violet, uh, Van Dyke Brown, some Unbleached Titanium and some Carbon Black. And I've also got the Metallic, so Bronze, Copper, Silver and Gold. And what I'm doing is just painting with that pure paint onto the side of the piece and then going over the top with some random strokes of paint in the different colours to give the rock some texture. Um, so by doing this we're creating some gradation and some definition in the rock um, and just giving, making it a little bit more interesting and then going back in putting more stars and I do that with each layer of resin that I did and on this particular layer I also did a couple of little black dots and I just thought that they added a little bit of something extra to the piece. I'm using my hair dryer on the cool setting to dry all of that paint really quickly and what I learned during this process is to not apply the paint too thick otherwise you have to wait a long time for that to dry. Going in again with the dry brush and I'm using a much smaller makeup applicating brush now and just adding in smaller patches of colour and then again blending it with the Kabuki brush to make it nice and soft and then uh, you can sort of see a little bit of um, pigment lifted up there so just dabbing some more on to cover it up. And the amount of depth and dimension that is in that uh, nebula is unbelievable. Now I'm going around the outside with my black paint pen and just creating random squiggly lines to create texture in the rocks to give it that rough rocky look. Now that is only the first layer of rocks that we do and I do two more to complete the cave. 
Now you can see me dabbing the surface of the resin there and that's called chopping. And what that's doing is breaking the surface tension of the resin and helping it to uh, self level. Now what I've got is a little bit of holographic glitter on my finger and I just tap that over all of the areas that I thought needed a little bit of something extra. So here I've got some glow in the dark powder mixed up in my resin. I've used uh, purple on my first layer, aqua blue and blue, and I'm just swirling it in with my finger so I don't leave harsh lines. Uh, for my little spaceman, he's got the aqua blue on him. And this piece really comes alive at night time, so the piggies steal the show during the day, and then at night under a bit of UV light, really comes alive. Now I'm using some 3D bubbles that I got from Etsy. Um, they come in a little like a two or three gram container and I added those to my uh, galaxy just to give it a bit of a three-dimensional look and see how it looks you don't really see them in the final piece so I could have done without that you could see all of that beautiful glow happening just there under the light and I'm sorry it was really quick but I will show you what the finished result looks like under black light now I'm going in with my second layer of the cave and because we're getting deeper back into the cave, you have to think about which perspective you're going for. This layer is a little bit darker, so closer to the entrance of the cave, all of the light from the universe is coming into the cave, so it is better lit. Whereas further back in the cave, towards the back of the cave, it would be much darker. So I'm just mixing that uh, Matisse Van Dyke brown with my uh, Mars Violet and the bronze and the other metallics that I have. And on this layer, I painted in some stalactites and stalagmites coming up and down from the floor and the ceiling and the little mound that my spaceman is going to st be standing on. So he's not going to be standing right at the edge of the cave, he's sort of back a little bit. Now I went over the tail of my comet with some TLP Twinkle mixed with the gloss varnish again, um, just to give it another layer of depth. And again going over all of the cave details with my black Posca pen to add in some rocky texture. And I made sure with the stalactites and stalagmites I made them in a curved fashion so that they look slightly round. Again, more dots, more stars, always populating the galaxy with more and more stars. And here I just painted in some more uh, pigment and realized, uh, to cover up the big star that I put dead center in the middle of the painting there, which I didn't, didn't like. Um, so I sort of covered it up, sort of hit it a little bit, and I did that on the subsequent layers as well. Now to stick my spaceman down, I used just a little bit of super glue to adhere him to the resin and then sealed him in with this coat of resin and I made sure that I monitored this for about two hours so that no bubbles formed around the outside of the transparency and I made sure to really press all of that air out from underneath it. Um, again sprinkling on just a little bit more glitter uh, in the areas that I thought needed it especially around the comet though like little bits of space dust coming off there and here I added some TLP Comet to my resin and then I dabbed it off with some paper towel. And what that did was softened all of those lines up and made some really wispy areas of uh, Comet floating in the resin rather than being um, adhered down to the actual surface. And it creates such a three-dimensional amazing look. Um, it really does add to the piece. Now we're coming up to the last layer of the cave and for this one it's really, really dark. So I just used Van Dyke Brown mixed with Amsterdam Lamp Black and Again, painting them a little bit smaller so it's coming further back into the cave, painting in a little, few more stalactites and stalagmites, and again going in with all of that detail with the Posca pen. Now the Posca pen does get a little bit lost in the darker areas, but you can still see it. Now we're going back in with the mixed resin, jumping all over the place here because I had to fit all of this into the time limit. And this is the final layer of resin. And in this layer, I added a little bit of TLP Glisten to my resin and overlaid that with the nebula cloud at the bottom there. So as we got closer to the top of the piece um, in terms of my resin layers I didn't do anything extra to the galaxy I left it as is and here you can see I'm going back in with that paper towel and I believe I actually added a little bit of TLP Macaw to that layer as well. Um, Macaw is a gold green and blue color shift indigo and absolutely amazing one of my favorite pigments as well. So there we go, and now it's time to reveal the final piece. All right, everyone. So the artwork is now complete, and I can't wait for you to see my galaxy piece. And here it is. Look at all of those amazing piggies underneath all of that resin. So there are six layers of resin on this total, and each one has a different aspect um, and a different combination of piggies in there. So you can see that nebula cloud um, I don't know if you can see the color changing in there, but it definitely happens. There we go. We've got more pinks 
and purples in that part. Now we go from blue to green. Look at all that amazing color change. And in that galaxy up in the top as well. You can see all of those gorgeous colors changing in that nebula. So I'm gonna turn off the lights and do a flyover with my phone because my camera cannot pick up the amazing glow in the dark um, ability of this painting. And I'm gonna show you that now. Um, and I really hope you've enjoyed my contribution to the pyjama party. And please stick around for Joanne Ralston. She's up next and I can't wait to see what she makes. So don't forget guys, if you like what I'm doing here, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. All right, so uh, by the time I had filmed this little section, the pigments had lost a little bit of their charge. So this is what it looks like with the lights out. And I'll show you what they look like now, fully charged. So mind you, I only charge these pigments for about a minute and a half to two minutes. And look how bright and amazing they are. Now, the camera does a pretty good job of picking that up, um, but still, you really need to see this in person to appreciate how amazing it is. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this. Stick around for the rest of the pyjama party, and I'll see you next time. Bye.